Hey folks, welcome to Building a Better Apocalypse. My name is Quill, and today we're building a greenhouse. Eh, that's a bit disingenuous. While it might have started as a greenhouse, the end product is really more of a greenhouse slash trading post hybrid, but I digress. This is what's on the docket for today, and I'm very excited to finally share it. The build is comprised of three main areas, with a spacious greenhouse located on the left, trading post on the right, and a loading dock right smack dab in the middle. Although I won't be setting this one up as a home base, it is entirely possible to forego having a trading stall and to instead make it into a bedroom. Quick note, thank you to the lovely folks on Discord that provided feedback and suggestions for the build. You guys are awesome, and I appreciate the help. As with the previous project, everything shown here is available in Alpha 20. No mods are needed, but we will tap into the creative menu for things that can't be crafted, looted, or purchased. For those who don't know, if you need to access the creative menu, press F1, then type CM, and press Enter. Afterwards, you'll be able to open the creative menu by pressing U, and if you click the symbol here, you can toggle dev blocks on to open up even more possibilities. Final note to anyone following along with this build, before each major section, I'll provide a list of everything needed to complete it. No worries about writing it all down though, because a full list of materials, decorations, and textures used is available in the description. That should about cover us, so let's get started. To begin, we'll want to find a nice flat area and lay out a 23 by 9 block outline of cubes. The rectangle we're placing will become the walls for the greenhouse. While it's not required to paint a grid pattern, I'll be doing so to make it easier to explain the layout. After placing the outline, pick one of the long sides to be the front and then move to the front left corner. Measure to the fifth block and extend a row of cubes by four blocks. Skip ahead two spaces and then place a four block row of cube trim half splits with the divide facing upwards like shown. Afterwards, skip five more spaces and place another row. If done correctly, we should now have three rows extending from the front of our outline on the 5th, 8th, and 14th blocks. Next, we'll want to carve out the trade stall. To do so, we'll line ourselves up on the 15th block from the left and add a row of five cube blocks inwards. From there, we'll turn to the right and connect it to the side, leaving us with a new 7x4 room once the walls are added. With the general outline complete, we can fill in the gaps with plates. Set them to advance and rotate them until they create a floor level with the top of the cubes. On the front of the build, we'll add some plates to create part of the porch. They'll run from the building to the end of the rightmost cube trim half splits. Fill in the area between the cube trim half splits with cube halves and extend it out by one extra row. We'll then use cube half trim splits twos to cap the ends of our loading dock. Normally, I'd hold off on adding any non-construction blocks until later, but we'll make an exception for this build. We need to add two 4x2 plots on the sides of the cube walkway, and once those are down, we'll place stairs filled on the end of the walkway and frame the plots with cube halves set to on face. We'll also add a cube quarter in the corner to complete the outline. With the foundation in place, we're going to shift our focus vertically and knock out the walls. Well, not knock them out, but rather construct them. I've adjusted the grid pattern for the outline. We'll still use the black and yellow to convey measurements, but I've changed a few spots to be red. For those, we'll want to build a 5 block tall wall. If placed correctly, this will leave us with two 5 block openings on the back wall for windows, another window on the side, and three openings along the front. Those three openings will in turn become our entrances and trader window. Mm -hmm. 
At the back and side openings, we'll place a row of cubes along the bottom and top two rows, leaving a 5x2 window for each location. For the garden and loading bay entrances, we'll want to close in the top two rows of each with cubes. As for the trader window, we'll place a line of cube half plate corner twos along the bottom to make a bar counter. From there, we can add cube halves on the third row and then complete the top two rows with cubes. Just so we don't forget, we should complete the doorway from the loading bay to the trader stall. On the top of our front and back wall, we'll place a row of wedge 60 blocks with the slope starting a slight tilt, not a sharp one. And from there, we'll close in the new openings on the sides with cubes. We can finish the walls by capping off the ends. This can be done with wedge 60 tips, wedge 60s, and cubes on the far sides. Before we do any more with the roof, we'll want to bring the interior walls up to match the pitch. This can be done with cubes, wedge 60s, and wedge 60 tips. Following the pitch of the roof, we'll line up and connect our two rows of wedge 60 tips to each other by using more tips. As for the next row, we'll use wedge 60 inclines to connect each end. This will continue the roof pitch on the exterior and begin the slope ceiling on the inside. From the front of the build, move to the top left and place a single line of cube halves on the inside. We'll then skip 5 blocks, place a second line, skip 5 more blocks, and close it out with a third line. This will leave us two 5x2 openings for sunlight to hit our crops. For the opening above the trading post, you can close it by using cube halves. On the right side of the base, above the trading post, we'll place wedge 60 tips and a gable 3 quarter block to complete the pitch. We can then continue that trend until we reach the new opening. Inside the build, we can use wedge 60 tips on the flat spaces to complete our ceiling slope. Back on the outside, at the top left of the build, we'll place two wedge 60 tips and gable 3 quarter to create a small pitch. We'll then use gable 3 quarter half blocks and wedge 60 tips half left and right blocks to create a small lip. We can replicate that on each of the other pitches. To continue the new lip, we'll use a mixture of wedge 60 tip half left and right blocks as well as wedge 60 incline half left and right blocks. Just set them to advance and get to rotate until they fit. To complete the lip, we'll use wedge 60 tip half corner left and right blocks for the ends and run wedge 60 tip half blocks along the front and back. We'll shift our focus to the front of the build where we need to add a roof above the farm plots and another above the trader window. For the farm plot roof, we'll use pillar 0.5 meter blocks on the outside corners. 
stack them three blocks tall, and then cap off the tops with door trim corners. We can then connect the parts to each other and the wall using pillar 0.5 meter blocks. For the roof, I'll be using catwalk V1 plate only blocks so it looks a bit more like ramshackled wood once painted. If you have any problems growing crops, these can be replaced with trellis blocks for a better result. For the porch in front of the trader, we'll want to use pole corner bracket left and right blocks as well as poles to make a frame. On the front, we'll place a bracket, a pole, and then another bracket before skipping three spaces and repeating the pattern. On the side of the porch, we'll place a vertical pole, followed by a bracket, two horizontal poles, and another bracket, then close off the end with a final vertical pole. Stairs can be placed in a three block opening for easy access. Along the new pole frame we built, we can place some catwalk V1 rail only blocks to make railings and cap off the ends with door trim 1 meter shapes. We won't cap the ends by the stairs. On top of the three door trim corners, we'll place three blocks worth of pillar 0.5 meter shapes and then cap them off with door trim corners. We can then connect the parts to each other and the wall like we did by the farm plots. Unlike those, I'll be adding a second layer of pillar 0.5 meter blocks on the bottom of our new frame. Just like the farm plots, we'll use some catwalk V1 plate only shapes to create a roof. We're nearly done with construction, we just need to add a few shelves on the inside and we can move on to painting. Immediately on the left of the loading bay entrance, we'll place two scaffolding planks two blocks high and then create some legs using pillar 0.5 meter double shapes. We can repeat the same idea on the opposite wall but do it three blocks up instead of two. To the right of the loading bay entrance, we'll create a line of five scaffolding planks, three blocks high, and form two legs on the sides using pillar 0.5 meter shapes. Inside the trading stall, we'll place a shelf on each of the short walls, three blocks up. No legs are needed for these. Alright, that's it for construction. Let's get ready to paint. Focusing on the exterior, we'll begin by painting the walls with wood siding white too, and then use blue metal on the roof. We can apply concrete brick texture around the base of the walls, and then paint the railings of the porch with rough cut wood. The porch floor can be painted with wood barricade texture. I like the lighter hue it gives, so you'll see a lot of it in this build. As for the pillars, we'll paint them using beer cooler side and then cover the roof with rough cut wood. This can also be repeated for the canopy above the farm plots, but use rust black in lieu of beer cooler side. For the trader window, I used rough cut wood to make a bar and wood fence to outline it. For the interior of the build, I decided to use wood fence around the base of the walls and wood painted too for the rest. As for the floor, I used wood barricade to give the room a brighter feeling. This was further complemented with the shelves being painted with wood barricade and beer cooler side. As for the ceiling, I'm defying expectations by using wood ceiling texture. Bet no one saw that coming.
It can also be used on the bottom side of the roof's lip. And finally, we'll paint the doorways and windows with tar paper. This will give a bright outline that might not look good at the moment, but I think it'll look pretty slick later on. We're nearing the end folks, all that's left is to furnish the build and then we can call it a day. Unlike the rest of the build, I'm not going to be giving specifics on every decoration that gets placed. I simply don't have the time nor the patience to try to script all that out and edit it down. Instead, we'll cover a few important placements, then go over what the thought process was for the rest of the build. If you'd like to copy what I did exactly, there should be more than enough shots of each spot to satisfy and you can find a full list of items used in the description. Let's get started. To kick off the important stuff, we'll begin by taking tarp fence falling blocks and tarp fence sagging blocks and frame the area around the canopy. We can then use some chain link fence blocks to close in the gap between the tarps and the roof. For each of the windows, I used wood store bulletproof blocks. You can get away with using normal glass blocks as well, I just prefer the way these look. A rolling garage door is a must for the loading bay entrance. I chose to go with a green one to match the nearby tarps. After playing around with it for a bit, I decided to add two bookshelves to the trader windows and then place the garage door on the inside of the stall. Some small gaps will be left on the sides, but they can be covered up by framing the door with poles. And as for a final important placement, we'll want to put some farm plots down. For this room, I went with a layer of planters around the perimeter and two rows in the middle. And now for the final product. For the loading dock, I wanted to make sure it looked like a spot where materials could be offloaded and stored. I also wanted to make sure we had access to a couple crafting stations and a little storage. The workbench and chemistry station won out as they look fairly similar to each other and blend in well enough with the rest of the room. I sprinkled some pallets of junk around, added a few potted plants, used different types of storage boxes, and this is what turned out. Simple, cozy, and decent enough connecting point between the rest of the sections. Hidden behind the vending machine rests a hallway. This gives us access to the trader stall and I felt it might work well enough as a sort of special storage. Perhaps our trader has some wares he'd like to keep under lock and key? Maybe he's got lock boxes for paying customers. I don't know, but I achieved the look you see here by closing off the back area with chain link fence and cell door. The way I built it, it's made to not be open, but rather more of a visual treat. If you prefer to make use of the space, just replace the cell door with a working one. As for the trader stall, I wanted to include as many different elements as possible. It's the apocalypse, so I'd assume the trader would have his hands on some random assortment of wares, stuff from the old world that might not hold value for everyone, but perhaps a select individual is a treasure. That's really just a fancy way of saying I put a bunch of random shit on the shelves to represent various trade goods. As for the bottom, I figured our trader would need a bed, maybe a spot to craft ammo, or work on the gear he's selling, and some secured boxes for his wares. And of course, should they need to leave, our trader can rest easy knowing that their stock is locked away safely and securely. Over on the front, comfort is key. We're expecting customers, and so making sure they got plenty of spaces to kick back and relax was important. For any travelers looking to increase their know-how or maybe share what they've learned, we've included two bookshelves waiting to be utilized.
Inside of the build, I struggled to find something to do with the open walls. One of my first ideas was to cover it with posters and signs, and this was also suggested on Discord. Another good option is to use something like potted plants or shelves. Since this one's mine, I decided I'm going to put something that the rest of you probably don't want to do. For those on this wall, thank you. I know I don't post often or share much, but I really, really appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for the support. You guys are awesome. And that's it! The build is complete and ready to use. Like the workshop, this project was a lot of fun to make. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the build. If this kind of stuff piques your interest, consider leaving a like or subscribing. It helps to grow the channel and lets me know I'm doing something right. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, y'all have a good one.